On today's show, since it was Selection Sunday recently, we're having our college basketball analyst on the show today, Ned Cash. Ned is going to help you fill out your bracket if you haven't filled it out already. Hopefully, he's going to give you some good inside information, let you know on uh, who are the teams that are going to make a run in the first weekend, who are some of the uh, surprise teams, because there are always some sort of surprises the first weekend. And hopefully, because of Ned's insight into college basketball, we can help win you some money if you're in the work pool at your office, or uh, hopefully you can come out with better brackets than all your friends because of the help that you got on the fan show. Then we um, end the show talking about a uh, little, yeah, I guess you, I guess you could say a little sad uh, story that uh, has recently uh, come out here in the metro area, and uh, also too, we're going to be talking a little Atlanta United. We have all that and much more. Welcome back to the fan show. This is our beginning of the week show. If you wandered onto this podcast, we are glad that you are here because we know that you want to hear all about sports, especially in the Atlanta a metro area. So if you're joining us for the first time, thank you. We are a part of fans, favorite fan.com. We are a sports information website all about the fan experience. If you don't know what the fan experience is, well, then you should go to fansfavoritefan.com. You will be just inundated with the fan experience there. So be sure to check out that website after you finish listening to this podcast and only after you finish listening to this podcast. Just kidding. If you want to check it out right now, I know you can do multitask things, listen to me and See all our great articles that we have at fansfavoritefan.com. Or you just want to check up on some scores because we got an amazing, amazing score ticker. Uh, So just check that out on fansfavoritefan.com. I am Alex Berger, and it was was a pretty big weekend in sports. Um, You had Selection Sunday, and uh, the conference uh, basketball tournaments uh, wrapped up. I felt like uh, pretty much uh, with the big ones here on the on the East Coast that all those pretty much went as scheduled. Everyone I, I felt um, read their script and play and played their their role pretty much. That uh, I had a feeling that. Virginia was going to beat North Carolina. They did. Uh, And I also felt like North Carolina was going to beat Duke because uh, since Duke beat them recently, and that's exactly what happened. And uh, right now, Virginia is a number one seed. So also, too, um, Villanova took care of business. Had to do a little fact-checking there, but yep. All went according to to the script during these conference championships. Uh, I think a little surprise, but not really that, um, cause you had some big upsets in the sec tournament. You had Auburn losing. You also had, um, it was a Tennessee, Kentucky sec championship. So that wasn't, I guess for both those fan bases, obviously Kentucky's going to, uh, travel to wherever the um, SEC tournament is because this uh, year it was in St. Louis and that's on the edge of the conference, uh, especially down here 
in Atlanta, I mean, that's that's a two and a half hour flight, or or depending if you catch the jet jet stream, it's an hour and a half. So, um, but yeah, that 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 that's a flight that, and it's I want to probably say it's it's an eight hour drive or or eight probably if you don't run into any traffic, but still like like that's 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 a drive uh driving up to um uh, Missouri but um but Kentucky fans Kentucky fans will go to any SEC basketball tournament even if it's in Fairbanks Alaska even if they have to uh, catch three or four flights and then get on a pontoon plane to uh fly to fly to Fairbank, Alaska. Um, or even if it was in Siberia, I, I'm pretty sure uh, Kentucky fans would um, would make their way up to Siberia if, if the SEC tournament was in Siberia. But uh, still, and, and obviously you saw that today, a lot, a lot of Kentucky fans. So, um, and it wasn't, I guess it wasn't too bad of a, of a trip for Tennessee fans. Uh, especially if you're in the Memphis area, and you happen to be a Tennessee fan. Well, that's 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 not a bad drive to uh, get up there, but still, SEC tournament in Missouri had some had some. It was some crazy. It was some crazy crazy upsets. Uh, Georgia, obviously, Georgia went on run, uh, but lost to Kentucky. So, and uh, obviously. I think we all know what happened to Mark Fox. We're going to talk about that towards the end of the show. But first, there is this. I just want to do a shout out to the weekend. Sometimes I do this uh, if it was a pretty good weekend. And this weekend was a pretty good weekend. So I want to give a shout out to my friend Brandy and Marcus because it was pretty cool. Uh, we just. Uh, a couple of dudes on Saturday night uh, chilling at a Longhorn in uh, Sandy Springs, and because Marcus had a had a gift card to uh, this Longhorn, so we got to got to eat a really uh, we. I think eating a really good meal is maybe downplaying a little bit. We ate like kings <laughs> there there at that Longhorn. I mean, the bread just kept on coming. We we all had steaks. Um, it, and it's like it, a Longhorn is one of those places, in my opinion, that that everything is good. So um, again, I, I, this might be free advertising again, but uh, I don't really care. But yeah, yeah, shout out to uh, Brandy and Marcus. Uh, always enjoy uh, hanging out with those uh, guys. Always great guys. Both uh, tech alums. Um, Actually, Brandy has a master's from uh, Georgia Tech, but uh, it's it's always cool. I always get to me and Brandy always get to talk about the uh, meaning of life. I don't think we figured it out yet, but uh, we're trying. So, uh, but but and, and always fun uh, hanging out with Marcus. Really cool, laid back guy. Um, just knows 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 a ton of stuff like technology wise and and, and about Star Wars and. Um, and a really, really cool guy just to, just to pick his brain. Really, uh, interesting. Always enjoy, uh, hanging out, uh, with, uh, those guys. So, uh, shout out. Also, congrats to Atlanta United, which on Sunday, they had their first home opener of the season and they beat DC United three to one. I wonder if, like, for new MLS clubs, they have to be called United. Maybe that's an unwritten rule somewhere. Who knows? But congrats still to Atlanta United. It was a sold-out house, and uh, that is one of the teams that fans, favorite fan, covers on a regular basis. So if you're a Atlanta United fan, stay tuned to Fans Favorite Fan because all season we'll be covering Atlanta United so if you just can't get enough Atlanta United stuff, check out fansfavoritefan.com. We will definitely, definitely hook you up on some uh, cool stuff there. But 
Uh, again, impressive, impressive showing by Atlanta United selling out their uh, home opener, which uh, there's no surprise uh, there uh, with that. And uh, I know a lot of people around here are pumped up about it. One of my friends is um, went to the game on Sunday. He's also going to the game this Saturday. So they have those nice new uh, peach jerseys. I want to uh, buy one of those. I think those are really cool, especially especially I love sports teams when they embrace the culture, and that's something Atlanta United United has done. So uh, congrats to Atlanta United. But now since uh, Sunday was Selection Sunday in NCAA basketball, uh, we're going to have Ned Cash on to break it all down, and hopefully we can help you win some money. Well, we just want to welcome back to the fan show, Ned Case, our uh, college basketball analyst from SportalSpace.com. Uh, Ned, how are you doing uh, today? Because uh, I know it was an exciting weekend for you, especially someone uh, who covers college basketball, that uh, this is the hugest weekend of uh, college basketball probably in the year with the conference uh, championships wrapping up, and then you had uh, yesterday selection Sunday. So a huge weekend in uh, college of basketball where they kind of separate the uh, pretenders from the contenders. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, a couple of surprises in conference tournaments, um, a couple uh, upsets, which, which ended up knocking the teams off the bubble. Um, you know, teams like Rhode, Davidson being Rhode Island today, um, you know, may have knocked out uh, a team like Notre Dame who was losing that first four out. So it was uh, it was exciting. A couple upsets, um, you know, a couple things held true to course, but it definitely made for an exciting uh, selection show to see who, who snuck their way in. Mm-hmm. I felt like the uh, ACC tournament just went to script um, because – I felt like that uh, there's no way that UNC is going to let Duke beat them uh, a second time in um, less than a week. And uh, then I knew when they played Virginia in the final that uh, Virginia, there was no way you were going to deny Virginia, especially uh, looking at the ACC tournament the whole week. Um, And also, too, it seemed like Kentucky, they didn't really have – a great team um, to be dominant in the regular season, but somehow they had a good enough team to win the conference tournament. So this is one of the great things about college basketball. Like I've been saying, like everything right now has changed since we uh, talked the last time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, big wins in tournament. I mean, Alabama winning, or, you know, getting all the way to the semifinals in their conference tournament probably is a kid exist in the uh, in GAA tournament. Uh, you know, you look at Syracuse winning a couple games in the ACC. They got in. Uh, you know, Louisville not being able to beat Virginia, Notre Dame not being able to beat Duke. You know, two wins that probably could have gotten them in the conversation um, just to get into the national tournament. So uh, it, that, that's a fun thing about the, uh, the conference tournament. It, it kind of goes either way with it. You can win your way in or potentially, you know, drop a game that, that could get you out of the tournament or drop you into seedings. Uh, so, so that was exciting, um, for sure. You know, the, the, the small majors, that's always exciting to see the teams get in. Um, like I said, you know, Davidson knocking off Rhode Island was, uh, you know, exciting. I don't think a lot of people expected Davidson to sneak their way in and knock off Rhode Island or State Bonaventure, uh, who also made a tournament for that conference. So it was, uh, it was a good weekend to see really kind of what teams could, uh, could show that they are tournament worthy, especially, you know, who's getting hot this time of year. Mm-hmm. Um, now, in the state of Georgia, can you predicted during the regular season that uh, there was no March Madness in the state of Georgia. I did. Well, I was wrong. <laughs> well, well, I'm glad you were wrong about that. But, uh, yeah, it's looking like in the state of Georgia there is no March Sadness. So, um uh, Congrats to the uh, Georgia State Panthers for making it in, and 
Uh, Ned, I just want to uh, ask you, how far do you think uh, Georgia State uh, can make it? Obviously, um, i trying to look up who they're playing, but obviously I know that they're going to be one of those teams that um, are playing the dominant team, so the the dominant team can't advance. Yeah, so yeah, they're the 15th seed playing Cincinnati uh, in the South region. So, uh, you know, Cincinnati is, is kind of a, a legit Final Four team this year. Um, they're in uh, the region with Virginia as the one seed, uh, so, you know, that'll be tough. But, you know, it's kind of favorable for Cincinnati. So I, I, I would take the Bearcats over the Panthers. Uh, but I've been wrong about Georgia, the state of Georgia basketball really all season. Um, you know, date back to what I said, Georgia Tech wasn't going to make the ACC tournament, and they did make it. So, um uh, Panthers could prove me wrong again, but I'm still going to uh, bet against them and take the Bearcats in the first round. Well, there you go. Yeah, I don't blame you. Kind of sticking with the safe pick. You don't really want to go too out in the left field, but um, but Nev, let's just let's make some uh, let's make some money for some people. Um, who would you say would be the team to look out for that could uh, possibly upset? Um, some some big some big name teams and make it to the next weekend out of these uh, smaller schools like Buffalo, for example. Um, and you also have uh, teams like Providence and Montana that that really don't get a lot of national attention. So if you if you were a betting man right now, who who would you bet to see out of those small schools that were going to make it to the next weekend? Yeah, I mean, Providence, the team you just mentioned, I think they're a 10 seed. Um, you know, they're a team that's, that's fun to watch. They play hard. Um, I think grit is a good word to describe the way they play. Um, you know, a coach that's passionate. Um, so, the, you know, they're a team that I, I think could um, could find their way in, uh, you know, as a 10 seed. Um, you know, Wright State, uh, small, you know, smaller conference team, obviously, coming out of the Horizon League. Uh, they were twenty five and nine this year. You know, they've, they've got a couple guys who can score. Um, you know, nobody really jumps off the stat sheet, but um, you know, the Wright State Raiders, I think, are a little bit of a surprise team. And then you're just kind of looking at twelve five matchups. Um, you know, obviously that's where an upset's always going to happen somewhere across the board. Um, you know, Kentucky's a five seed this year against Davidson, but they're playing pretty well. Uh, but I, I think New Mexico State versus Clemson. Um, could be that 12-5 upset to, upset to look for. Um, New Mexico State 28-5 on the year. Just uh, I think someone said that they've got five, four or five upperclassmen starters averaging over 10 points. Um, and, and that's just the veteran kind of scoring you need in the, in the tournament. So um, I, I like that 12-5 upset for uh, maybe some of you guys out there. I know Joe, you may be listening. Uh, so, so that's for you, 12-5 New Mexico State over Clemson. Interesting, interesting, and yeah, I could definitely see that. Um, now, I want to talk to you about a team that is in that smaller echelon of schools, but uh, this is a team that's proven themselves before uh, Butler plays Arkansas, and I honestly, even though Arkansas is a seventh seed, uh, Butler is a tenth seed, but I honestly see that game as uh, a pretty – evenly balanced game, and do you think Butler uh, could make a run to the Elite Eight or the Sweet 16? Uh, you know, I, I, I do like <laughs> Butler, um, you know, coming out of the Big East, that's, that's a conference that got, I think, seven teams in, um, and, and, and so that, you know, that alone, I think conference play makes a big difference, uh, but, you know, one guy for Arkansas – Daniel Gafford, um, he's a freshman, he's 6'11". Um, he's, he's just really coming along well. He's a beast um, on the inside, and I think he's going to be tough for Butler. Um, I, I like that Butler has kind of that, that March Madness feel to his program, uh, but I, I think they're going to have a tough time coming out of the first round um, uh, against a good Arkansas team that has played well in the SEC um, and you know, got bounced to the semifinals to Kentucky. Uh, but, you know, it's a well-tested team. So, 
you know, we'll see where Butler goes. If they do get out of that game, they got to play a Purdue team, which is, you know, a big team on the inside. Um, you know, I, I kind of like Butler maybe a little bit more against Purdue. Uh, but, we'll, you know, we'll see if they get past Arkansas in the first round. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, let me ask you about this, because obviously still anything uh, can happen in this tournament. And uh, the most sports – the guy that has the most sports knowledge – always seems to fail, and, and his bracket's always destroyed by the uh, first weekend, but you always have uh, someone who knows nothing about sports and gets everything <laughs> right. It's of guaranteed to happen every year, but I just want to talk about a crazy scenario right now. Uh, both Duke and North Carolina are both two seeds, and, if, uh, and I feel like in their brackets they could – make a possible run, even though they've showed during the regular season that they're not necessarily that type of a championship team. But still, if they play their cards right, they could make it. Do you think that we could see a uh, North Carolina-Duke Final Four matchup, seeing this uh, rivalry game uh, play itself four times in a year? Uh I am going to go with history on this one and say no, because <laughs> to my knowledge, uh, Duke and North Carolina have never played in the NCAA tournament, which is pretty shocking uh, that in, you know, all the you know last 30 years that uh, the dominant programs has never happened. Uh, but, it, you know, to date, as like I said, I don't believe that has ever happened. So I'm going to say no, but, uh, but boy, would it be exciting because, I mean, you know, one, two, and three this year were all fantastic games, and uh, you know I, I, I know fans of, of both sides who even you know going back and forth were saying, "Man, that was that was an incredible game. That was a Duke UNC game." So uh, we can hope for it, but I'm gonna go with with the numbers on this one and say no. Okay, okay. Well, let's talk about things that are more practical then. Uh, how did you feel about the uh, number one seeds having Virginia, Villanova, Xavier, and uh, Kansas? Uh, you know, I, mean, I, I guess a little surprised that Xavier still is up as a one with the conf- with losing their conference semifinals. But you know, a team like Duke, you know, didn't win their conference tournament. Uh, you know, the other two seeds weren't. Uh, fans, you know, Cincinnati didn't win their conference tournament, so. I think some of the, the two seeds who could have been one seeds just didn't didn't do what they needed to do to become a one seed and Xavier does enough for the regular season to to earn that even without winning their conference or at least making it to the championship. Mhm. Mhm. Uh do you feel like the media or or just the selection committee was a little bit um generous to Xavier? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, you know, I, I think the Big East was the most uh, conference this year, and, and Xavier was a really good team. I mean, they were, you know, 27-4. They lost to Arizona State at the beginning of the year when they were really hot. Uh, and, and, you know, Arizona State is a, is a, is a tournament team, which is a little surprising in itself. Uh, you know, lost at Villanova, um, at Providence to get another tournament team, and, and they lost excuse me, twice to Villanova and then at Providence. So, uh, you know, pretty much won every game that they needed to win, and, and even their four losses were all two tournament teams. So uh, I, I I don't think it was – it was unwarranted for the people one season. They played tough out of conference schedule, played Baylor, played Cincinnati, played Wisconsin. So I, I think one season was deserving of, of Xavier. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, oh, let me just get your opinions on um... – the South bracket, which um, is going to play, is going to be uh, played here in Atlanta. Um, what, outside of what we talked about, what what stands out to you? What matchups are you looking forward to? So yeah, in, in the South region, uh, you know, I think on the top half we're going to see Virginia and Arizona. Um, I, I think they're pretty dominant teams. Um, you know, Virginia's going to obviously close to the first round and, and then play the winner of Creighton and Kansas State and, and you know, whoever that is, it, it'll be a nice run for them, but Virginia's defense will end up just doing what it does to teams. Um, you know, Arizona will probably play Kentucky in, in that second round. Um, it's DeAndre Hayden um, and uh, Alonzo Trier for Arizona are just, I mean, some studs, and, and, and that's right. right. If, you have, if you have two of those in the NCAA tournament, you're going to do well. 
Um, so I, I see that in the top half. You know, bottom half kind of open. I mean, Cincinnati is a two seed, so they're going to be a favorite. Um, Tennessee is the three seed, but I, you know, I kind of like that right state team, like I said. Um, so we'll see if Tennessee makes it out of the first round. So, um, you know, I, I think we'll see Virginia, Arizona, and, and, and then maybe kind of anybody in the bottom half. Probably Cincinnati will be the third team. And it could be Tennessee, could be Miami, um, and, and maybe even a right state. So, It'll, it'll be fun. I, I think we could see Virginia or Arizona be in the Final Four team coming out of the South. Mm-hmm. What about the uh, West? What are you looking forward to in the West uh, bracket? Yeah, the West bracket, uh, you know, the, the matchup of Texas A&M and Providence is, is going to be a fun matchup. A&M is really hot to start the year. Providence has been hot on the back end of the year. Um, and, and A&M has some injuries midseason. They've come back pretty strong. Um, and, and so that first round game is, is going to be a fun one. Also, I think Houston being a six seed is, is a little bit um, a little bit underseeded. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, play in San Diego State that first round, then probably Michigan in the second round. So um, I, I think Houston could be a team to watch out of there. Um, you know, North Carolina and Xavier will be the favorites. Um, you know, I, I I do kind of like this Xavier team. I, I sometimes feel like I'm picking too many one seeds, but um, I I think Xavier out of the West would, would be a safe pick with uh, with Houston being the, maybe a sneaky team there. Um, and, and I think a Providence North Carolina second round game would be really fun. Okay, um, what's your thoughts on the East? Uh, so the East. Uh, so that has another great game with Virginia Tech and Alabama. Uh, two teams that get up and down, great guard play, score the ball a lot, play suspect defense, we'll call it. Uh, and, and Colin Texas for Alabama is just always probably the best player on the court. He's so, so fun to watch. Um, so I, I kind of like Alabama because, again, I think having the best player, especially in early tournament games, uh, makes a difference. Uh, so, you know, that game's going to be, Really fun. Uh, the Arkansas Butler game, you know, we touched on that. So that would be another really good one. Um, you know, Villanova should coast through their half. Um, you know, they'll play the winner of that Virginia Tech Alabama game. Villanova plays more defense than both those teams combined. So Villanova will probably win that one. Uh, but the bottom half, you know, maybe Texas Tech, Purdue's a two seed, uh, but Purdue's kind of been, been average on the back half of the season. Um, and it, if Florida can get hot, they can score a lot of points, but. I, I just don't love to rely on other ways for to play the four guards this year. So, uh, you know, East, uh, probably Villanova is your best bet there with, with maybe, uh, you know, maybe like a Texas Tech sneaking their way into the Elite Eight. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, now, just just give me your thoughts on the Midwest. So the Midwest is definitely the toughest uh, region, in my opinion. Kansas is the one seed, Duke's the two seed. Michigan State is the three seed, and the four seed is Auburn, who's maybe not the strongest four seed, um, with kind of some inexperience and, and struggles in the last couple weeks of the season, but still a really talented team. Uh, but, you know, Duke's probably going to play uh, Michigan State in the Sweet 16th, um, so, so that'll be a fun one. A lot of people like Michigan State early. Uh, I, I think we'll see how Duke played the first two games again. They've just kind of been inconsistent. You t- talked about it earlier. A lot of talent, uh, just that they could put together for six games or not. Uh, and then Kansas is really good. And they've been good since, uh, you know, December, uh, January. Really, once they start conference play, they got on their roll. Uh, so that's a really tough region. Uh, I, I think Bucknell, uh, in their first round game against Michigan State, could give the Spartans a little bit of trouble. If Michigan State's not ready to play. Uh, but if, if Michigan State gets out of that, they're probably going to win. Their next game, um, speaking of their next game, is Arizona State-Syracuse play-in game on Tuesday, I believe. Um, mm-hmm. I think the winner of that probably wins their second game against TCU. But that Arizona State-Syracuse gave two teams. I'm surprised got in. Uh, but that will be a fun um, first four game, at, as they like to call it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, out of these four brackets, could you just give me a, a team in the south and in the east and the west, in the midwest, that, that – that's on upset alert for uh, week one. Uh, okay, so upset alert. Uh, all right, quick look at the bracket here. This is like my first kind of true look at the bracket. So uh try to give everyone my best first opinion. So coming out of the south, 
We like that, so. Yeah, so so Wright State, uh, you know, one of the ones I touched on, 25-9 and nine this year, uh, won their conference tournament. Tennessee has really been played well, uh, but mm-hmm. Wright State, I I don't know. I just, that was just a little bit of a gut feeling. Uh, so so that's, I'm going to say Tennessee in the South, on upset alert. Uh, moving into the West, uh, first round upset alert. Uh, I'm going to go to another 14 3 matchup, uh, Montana, Michigan. And I'm going to go with the old uh, week off of the Big Ten. It's going to hurt Michigan. And so I'm going to take Montana in that one. Uh, so we go East or Midwest next? Uh, let's go East. All right, East first round upset. Uh, I don't know if we can really call it an upset, uh, but I, I think St. Bonaventure is going to beat UCLA in their first four games. Uh, and, and the winner of that becomes an 11 seed and plays Florida. And I like uh, I, I like the winner of that one. I like the Florida on upset alert in the East. And finally, out of the Midwest, uh, I'm going to put it on Auburn on upset alert uh, against Charleston. I don't know anything about Charleston. But Auburn has not been playing that well, and uh, I'm going to put the four seed Auburn on upset alert in the Midwest. Mm-hmm. Ned, I think a uh, majority of America right now is going off their gut feeling on who they're picking <laughs> in this in this tournament. So, uh, give me a reason, uh, since I'm not a big uh, college basketball fan, but but give me a reason for people like me uh, who are now just kind of tuning into college basketball, but give me a reason why I should watch these four, these first playing games, because uh, if you're like me, you're thinking these games are pretty much nonsense, that, that uh, the field is already big enough. Why why add these playing games? Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the first four are, I mean, you know, for the 16 seasons, you know, it's, it's a little bit goofy. It's just a way to get some extra teams in. Uh, but, you know, it's fun to see those seeds, you know, go all out. And that 16 seeds, you're probably never going to be in a one seed. Uh, but for you to play in that, that first four play again, your team and your school can get an NCAA tournament win. Um, so, so that's a really cool thing. Um, just to see those guys, uh, you know, earn something like that who play really hard, uh, you know, give their sport all they have and then maybe just take a chance to go to the, the biggest school. Uh, but then we look at these, you know, 11 seeds playing against State, Bonaventure, or UCLA. I mean, those are two really good teams, and, and then Syracuse and Arizona State. I mean, you know, those could just as well be 7, 10, 8, 9 matchups as, as they are 11 seed playing games. So it's, it's still 100% NCAA tournament basketball. Uh, you know, for those of you into, uh, lines and over-unders and other such things, it's a couple extra games to get in on, and it's just, you know, a, a kickoff to the NCAA tournament gives you something to watch on Tuesday and Wednesday because you can't go four days without college basketball. Yeah, yeah, that seems to be the the rule of thumb. Um, what uh, what are you looking forward to uh, with this uh, national tournament? Um, you know, I I think one thing you know people complain about the what it does a lot. And, uh, you know, while I agree it's, a, it's not the best for college basketball, it's hard to really get to know the players and pick teams and, and like, team year after year. But, you know, the NCAA tournament's a time where a lot of these one and does know that the cameras are on. Everybody's watching. It's a chance for them to show out. And, and that's why I like, you know, a lot of times the teams that just have the best players, the most talent, because these guys, it's their last chance to play college basketball, to play on the stage. It's a chance for them to – you know, show off to, to a huge national audience of what they could do with the ball in their head and, and, and everything they could do to help their team win. And if you could get, you know, a, a group of seniors or a group of freshmen to just, say, hey, let's let's put it together, really buy in it and for six games, play the at our highest level. It, it's really good basketball, and it's really fun to watch. And, and obviously the one-game tournament uh, is just a, a, a feel that's, that you don't have a lot in, in every sport. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I just want to get your opinion uh, before we close out here. Um, over the weekend, um, I'm pretty sure everyone else is aware about this, that uh, University of Georgia uh, fired uh, Mark Fox, and 
Uh, I'm assuming that uh, the athletic director, uh, Greg McGarity, is kind of like uh, the governor of Georgia right now when it snows that his uh, approval rating is okay when he doesn't fire anyone, but uh, now that he's uh, fired someone who uh, has contributed a lot to the uh, Athens community and just the University of Georgia altogether, I'm pretty sure right now, uh, his popularity isn't really that popular. Um, so, yeah, I just want to get your thoughts on um, just with that whole uh, situation that uh, went down this weekend. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a little bit of a huge surprise. Uh, you know, I, I, I think, you know, with, with two SEC tournament wins, people might think he, he had a chance to save his job. But I, I think people, you know, a little bit see the success of the football team and, and what a head coaching change can do it and with um, how attractive the University of Georgia is. Uh, you know, there's there's no reason that you can't be successful in, in, in every aspect, especially in athletics, especially in basketball. Uh, the, the SEC got eight teams uh, in, in the NCAA tournament this year, so the SEC conference as a whole is stepping up. And, and Georgia, I, I think they've just felt that they were plateauing a little bit and, and weren't taking the next step up with, with all the other schools and just felt like it needed that new direction. And, and Mark Batts, Mark Fox has done a lot of really good things. I had a handful of 20 win seasons, which which not a lot of coaches have done at at the University of Georgia. But uh, at the same time, I I think there's 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 reason to move on if you just feel like you've kind of hit the the best of what you're going to get with with this particular coach. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now I want to ask you. I don't want to ask you about who do you think is going to be the next coach or, or, or who would you uh, get as the next coach. But I, I do want to know. Just, but I do want to know just from a, a standpoint of, uh, I know that uh, you're involved with a lot of the uh, high school basketball scene, and uh, who's who's either a guy or, or or a person that you would want um, on that staff that that knows the state of Georgia, knows the Georgia high school basketball scene to help give Georgia a, an edge in recruiting because. Uh, right now with Mark Fox, uh, they don't have it, and um, the top players in this state end up going elsewhere. Yeah, um, you know, uh, I'm totally blanking on his name right now. Uh, <laughs> if you'll give me one second. Um, oh, okay. yeah, I, um, uh, Charmin, <laughs> sorry, Charmin White um, is his name. He's, he's the assistant coach at Georgia State. Uh, I believe it's his second year. He used to be that coach at Miller Grove, who a lot of Georgia high school fans will know was a dominant uh, 6A basketball program. I think they won six of seven state championships. Uh, he was the head coach for five of them, I believe. Uh, actually, he was the head coach for all six of them. Uh, but it, he, he went to Georgia State to be an assistant for Ron Hunter. Obviously, now they're making the tournament. Uh, so, so he's somebody who is, knows the state very well. Um, obviously, from a high school level, I uh, have a lot of success. Uh, you know, now with the college game, still in Georgia, having the same success. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if, if he's a head coach, um, you know, just yet because uh, he's, he's only had a year as an assistant. Um, and, and I don't know if he wants to make that lateral move to go to assistant Georgia, but um, he's, he's a name that I think um, is it, just to keep in mind who knows the Georgia basketball team very well. Now you said it was a lateral move. Um, I could see where you would say that, but but I just want to know: Do you think it's a lateral move just because um, it's a Division One program? Because I I think if this guy does get in there, does become an assistant, just running with this hype, uh, this hypothetical right now, um, that that if you go to the University of Georgia, you're going to get a little bit more exposure than you would at State. Just That's just my thinking. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think being a power of five, obviously you're going to get more exposure, more recognition, but, uh, you know, I mean, you don't know who the head coach is going to be, um, and, and there's just not a lot of stability, right, as opposed to right. if you're at Georgia State with Ron Hunter. I mean, Ron Hunter could probably be at Georgia State for as long as he wants. I um, mean, had a ton of success, won a tournament game with them, uh, has it back to the NCAA tournament now. So it, there just seems to be a lot more stability at Georgia State. You, you know what you're going to get with Ron Hunter. 
Uh, you know, you know, if Ron Hunter does leave for a bigger job, that that potentially you could be in line for that job. Uh, it, it, it maybe it's just not quite the same pressure, not the same uh, media exposure continuously as as an SEC school would be. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you, Ned. Always a pleasure having you on. Always uh, enjoy just your analysis of of college basketball. And I know our uh, listeners always enjoy you as well. Uh, where's um, the best place to get in contact with you uh, through social media. Obviously, we're not inviting trolls here, but um, <laughs> but but if someone wants to actually have an educational conversation about college basketball with you, uh, where's the best place to do it? Yeah, it's Twitter. It's at the Real Dead Cash. Uh, K A I S H is the last name. At the Real Dead Cash on Twitter. Um, I'm there to uh, to discuss if uh, if you got questions, college concerns, no doubt. All right. Well, thank you, Ned, for coming on the fan for coming on the fan show today. Obviously, if you Absolutely. haven't heard by now, it's in all the papers. It's it's um, everywhere on media. Uh, Mark uh, Fox got uh, fired from the University of Georgia the Saturday after uh, Georgia lost uh, to Kentucky. And I don't really want to go through all the details and. Um, I don't really want to talk about right now uh, who a who who would be a potential replacement uh, for Mark Fox. Um, I feel like Mark Fox is not going to get the credit uh, he totally deserves, and the reason I feel like the University of Georgia would love to have Mark Fox around as long as they could because he did everything the right way. He wasn't involved in this AAU shoe crap. He uh, he he ran a clean program. His kids graduated, but he just didn't win enough. And and I felt like it is time to go. But it's kind of one of those things where it, it's kind of like the Mark Rick firing. It's it's sad to see a guy like this go. And the only fault you have against him is he just didn't win enough. But we live in this. Insta tweet Facebook society where uh, we want instant results. And unfortunately, um, I, I do believe Mark Fox had the time to to write the ship, but I mean, he entered into a disaster. Georgia basketball was a disaster uh, going through the Herrick stuff, then having the Dennis Felton era. Uh, yeah, he, he didn't walk into the to the best. Um, circumstance but still I felt like uh, he had um, three NCAA tournaments um, showings and uh, unfortunately Georgia would always lose in uh, the first round in the NCAA tournament so uh, no flashy no flashy stuff there but still I feel like I feel like with Georgia basketball that, Georgia basketball could, I wouldn't say be the Kentuckys of the world, but you could possibly see them be like Alabama or what Tennessee had with Bruce Pearl. I could uh, potentially see that. I don't think they could be the Floridas of the world. I'm not talking that they're going to automatically win a um, NCAA um tournament national championship I don't I don't think you're not going to see that for 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 a very long time or the stars just have to align somehow but but I feel like if you get the right coach if you get a guy that 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 can win over the state that um I don't think the top basketball talent is going to go to the University of Georgia in the state but if you can keep if you can keep key guys home and I'm not talking top. I'm not talking like top of the list guys, but I'm talking like I'm talking like middle of the list guys or or, or the third or, third or fifth choice. If somehow you can keep those guys home, I feel like you you can be pretty legit. Look at Auburn this past year. Auburn's got a bunch of Georgia guys, and look at the success that Auburn's had this year. And I feel the same thing. Georgia can do the same thing if they get the right guy in place, if they get 
um, a coaching staff that has strong ties uh, either with uh, AAU or um, especially with the um, Georgia High School Association that, that has strong ties with um, a lot of Georgia um, high school basketball coaches, I feel like Georgia can go a long way that they can be better than uh, the expectations. I'm not expecting a national championship, but at the same time, I'm, I expect, I want to see consistency. And I haven't seen that from George. I just want to see consistency or I want to see some sort of road to possibly competing for a, um, a chance to be in the Sweet 16 or the Final Four. Uh, I'm not asking for a national championship in men's basketball, but I'm asking to be competitive. At least be competitive your third or fourth year that you're on the job. And um, and, and it's going to be tough because I feel like, obviously, Georgia Tech should probably, out of the two, Georgia Tech should probably be the better basketball team. But Georgia has that potential to be one of the premier basketball teams in this league because of the inconsistencies that a lot of these uh, teams have. And and what I'm talking about is congrats to Georgia State for making uh, the national tournament. I'm glad it's not going to be March Sadness uh, here in the state of Georgia. But, um, but hopefully, um, hopefully Georgia can get the right person. Um, I wish Mark Fox the best. If you haven't checked out his Twitter, you should look at his Twitter. It's kind of funny, in my opinion, but uh, still, I, I hope that he can land on his feet, and I hope that uh, he can he can get a good job. Hey, I mean, Mrs. Old Miss jobs open, and and that's not a bad job, and that's not a bad um, state to uh, recruit out of. Um, obviously, you're close to the Memphis area. So uh, if you can convince guys to, to go to Ole Miss instead of Memphis, that that that's a that's a win right there. So, um, but at the same time too, and I just want to talk about this briefly, and um, we're gonna wrap up the show here. I feel like Greg McGarity, because I've seen this twice. I haven't paid attention the other times he's done it, but uh, when Greg McGarity wants to fire someone. Obviously, he's not going to say this, and he's not going to say this in a public forum. He said when he fired Mark Rick that uh, on the drive back to Athens, he decided to do that. I don't believe that for a second. I believe you saw the Florida game, and you wondered where the rest of the season was going to go. And then you came up with, okay, maybe, maybe then on the way home from the Georgia Tech game, that okay, we're actually going to pull the trigger. Maybe you decided then, but I don't. I, I think it was a little bit more premeditated that you saw the Florida game and you almost want to throw up in your mouth. So, um, but I see this with Greg McGarity that there's one game that I feel like they kind of focus on, and then they kind of give him his last chance, and when they don't have the last chance then they fire him. And it's the same thing here. I, I'm pretty sure they watched that Auburn game that they played at home, and, and Greg was like, okay, we're going to make a change. If they don't win the SEC tournament, we're going to make a change. And that's exactly what they did. They fired him the next day. I thought that they would fire him. Maybe if they did fire him, I thought they were going to fire him after the NIT or something of that nature. But it seems like once Greg McGarity's made up his mind, he's made up his mind and he has enough, cl- I'll give him this, he has enough class to do it after the season. So for all you Greg McGarity haters out there, uh, he does, he does, he won't fire a coach midseason. He's, he's already proven that but he has made the biggest hire with Kirby Smart and so far it is paying off but uh this is the second biggest hire he's gonna have to make in his career and 
Um, obviously, this is this is the the not so friendly side of, of college athletics, and I mean, as a, as an AD, you're going to have to make these decisions because, especially at a place like the University of Georgia, you want to win championships at every level, and that's what you have to do. I mean, it's not like you can get rid of the athletes themselves, but but you put you put head coaches in place to um, try to win championships, and when they can't get the job done, well, you move on. All parties move on. So, but I wish Mark Fox the best of luck. He's the nicest uh, person you could probably ever meet, and I've met him a couple of times. I even met him, met him recently at the Georgia State. Uh, App State game, shook my hand, I said some kind words, and you could tell that he was really appreciative of, of what I had to say, but unfortunately, um, this had to happen, and um, and I think he reached the ceiling for the Georgia basketball program, and I wish him the best of luck, and, and I know that he's going to land back on his feet, and I know that he's going to be in a good uh, position, and, and, and I hope he can reach a Final Four. I mean, I, I would be proud of him to see him reach a Final Four or, or win a championship. But uh, Mark Fox here on the Fan Show, we wish you the best of luck. Here on the Fan Show, to have him on and given his to give his analysis on what's going on with the uh, brackets. So, like I said at the beginning of the show, hopefully we can help win you some money at your office pool or with your friends or with whoever. But we also appreciate you guys. We appreciate the listeners. We appreciate the new people that started following us on uh, SoundCloud and on YouTube. So, uh, but we need your help. We really, really need uh, your help with um, help making the fan show grow on the internet. And one of the ways you can do that is is if you liked what you heard today. Another way that's great to interact with us directly, well, kind of indirectly, but still somewhat directly. It's interesting how the internet works, but on the comment section, if you just want to write a comment uh, either about the show or about uh, Selection Sunday or just want to give your opinion on what's going on in college basketball, or Atlanta United, or Mark Fox is firing. Be sure to put that in the comment section because we want to hear from you. We are fansfavoritefan.com, and we are all about the fan experience. And one of the ways the fan experience benefits everyone is if you um, leave your opinion, leave your feedback, because we want to hear from you guys. And the only way of knowing what the fans really want is if you... Uh, is if you let us know by giving uh, your feedback and the comment section is a way to give your feedback. Also, too, if you want to tweet at me, I am Alexander71004, Alexander71004, so be sure to uh, hit me up on Twitter, especially if you want to send me a cool tweet, uh, I will read it on air. That is a promise. Uh, So... Be sure to look me up on Twitter. I'll put that in the show description. But again, we appreciate everyone uh, that listens to the fan show. Like I said, we're all about the fan experience. And um, another way that, that you can enjoy the fan experience is interacting, especially uh, with uh, this show. So just tell us how you feel or uh, give us your opinion but at the same time let's just be adults about everything Um, I know everyone knows how to be adults but also too uh, since this podcast is wrapping up and we definitely appreciate if you listen if you're listening to this if you listen to this point thank you thank you very much because I know I know that's a lot a lot of uh, stuff but uh, now be sure to check out fans, favoritefan.com. If you haven't already, be sure to check that out right now. Go, go to the website now. I know that you're going to enjoy it. I know you're going to love it. Just go there now. But uh, thank you all. You all are awesome. I hope you have an amazing 
day. I hope this helps with your Monday or Tuesday or or, or to get you, or to get through the Wednesday. It's gonna be the weekend soon. If you listen on a Wednesday, so or or even if you listen on a Monday, the weekend is coming soon. So hopefully that can just help you. Hopefully that can uh, get you through your week. Definitely appreciate you guys. Have an awesome day. Fan show 54 is out.